If you're searching for the most complete power dedicated server guide, you have came to the right place. There are two methods for installing the server files. The first method will be through Steam Library. Click on Game Library. On your top left, click on the drop down menu, check Tools, and you will find Power Dedicated Server on your list. Go ahead and install the server. Once the server is installed, launch it once and close it after. This creates a bunch of new files for server configurations. Next, you will want to navigate to your server folder, right click, hover onto manage, then browse local files. In this folder, look for the file default power settings.ini, right click and edit, highlight everything from here and hit Ctrl C to copy. Then click on power folder, saved, config, then Windows server folder. While in this folder, look for the file power settings.ini, right click and edit. Once you're in the file, hit Ctrl V to paste the default settings into this file. Next, look for the string admin password. You want to set a password for your admin access. After that's done, you can also change your server name from here. Let's just put my power for an example. And here is where you change the maximum number of players. Once that's done, go ahead and close and save this file. Now let's move on to the next method of installing the server files. In this method, we will be using Steam command to install the server files. Now download Steam command from the link I've provided in the description. Then extract steamcommand.exe to the folder where you want your server to be installed. Navigate to where you have extracted Steam command. On this directory, type cmd, then hit enter. A command prompt will be launched, then copy and paste the strings I've provided in the description and hit enter. This will download and update power server files onto this folder. Next, double click on power.exe, wait for this text to appear, then close the server. This creates the necessary files for your server configurations. Look for the file default power settings.ini, right click and edit, highlight everything from here and hit Ctrl C to copy. Again, click on power folder, saved, config, Windows server. In this folder, look for the file power settings.ini, right click and edit, hit Ctrl V to paste the default settings into this file. Once that's done, look for the string admin password, set a password for your admin access. Edit this string to change the default server name. Changing this number here changes the maximum number of players allowed onto the server. Once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and close and save this file. Now, the next step is to create a batch file on your desktop so that it's easier for you to start your server with a single click. Right click on your desktop, create a new text file, choose a name for the file, then change its extension to .bat. Right click on the file you have just created, then choose edit. Copy the directory address where powerserver.exe is located, then go to your file, type start, spacebar, paste the directory address that you have just copied, slash powerserver.exe, then copy the strings of arguments from the description below. These arguments are optional. You may now close and save this file. Double click on the batch file to start your server. You may now fire up your game and connect to your server via 127.0.0.1.8211 if you're playing and hosting on the same PC. If you're hosting on a second PC connected to the same router, you will have to connect to the IP of the second PC. To find this, type ipconfig in the command prompt of your hosting PC and you will find your host IP here. In your game, type your host IP colon 8211 then click connect if you have connected to a game congratulations you have successfully created your own server however in order for your friends to connect to your server over the internet they will need to connect to your public ip giving your public ip can be a hassle to remember if you have a dynamic ip so i recommend using duck dns a free dns service that binds your public ip to a subdomain and updates it automatically simply create an account with duck dns and log in to the dashboard here, you can find your public IP and most importantly, create a subdomain for your friends to join your server. Once that's done, click on install on the top menu. Choose the domain you have just created. Then click on Windows GUI. A link will be provided to download the graphic user interface. The link will direct you to a GitHub page, then to an external site where the installation files can be downloaded. Simply download the zip file Extract them to a folder, then double click to install.
Once you have installed the graphic user interface for DuckDNS, simply type DuckDNS on your start menu to launch the software. If you do not have Java installed, it will prompt you for an installation. Simply install Java and rerun DuckDNS. DuckDNS can be found in your tray. Right click on DuckDNS and click on DuckDNS settings. Here, you will need to input your domain and token for your subdomain. You can find this information on your DuckDNS web dashboard. Copy and paste this respectively, then click OK. Once that's done, hover your mouse onto DuckDNS to check if it's running. Now that you have your subdomain all set up, you may provide your friends with this address in order to connect to your server. You may also check if your server is being queried by the game via battlemetrics.com. Simply type your server's name and check off official servers, then hit search. If your server doesn't appear here and your friends still have issues connecting to your server, then you might have an issue with port forwarding. For port forwarding, you will have to log into your router's dashboard. I am showing an example on how to port forward on a TP-Link router. Different routers name port forwarding differently. Some calls them port mapping, tunneling, punch through, and etc. On TP-Link routers, they are called virtual servers under NAT forwarding. Choose a service name, and it will do. Then type 8211, which is the game server's port, onto external port and internal port. For internal IP, you will have to type in your host local network IP, which I have shown how to find them earlier in this video. As for protocol type, UDP will do. But in this video, I will be using both TCP and UDP. If you still have problems connecting to your game server over the internet, you might want to check your Windows firewall. Go to your firewall settings, click on allow an app through firewall, scroll through the list of apps and make sure that powerserver.exe is allowed. Or you may also manually create a new firewall inbound rule via advanced settings. Click on new rule, select port, select UDP, type 8211, allow the connection, click on next, simply type any name then click finish. If I've helped you successfully run a dedicated server, I would appreciate if you click on the like and subscribe button on this channel. Thank you for watching.